Steve Hi, with us. Good evening. Good evening, ABC. How are you? Well, thank you. Have you got your Bible in front of you? I have. Uh, Acts 24. And we just read verses one to nine there. So we will re be recapping on that as well. So, so we're looking at this here and um, there's quite a lot going on actually in, in this particular um, area here. So we, we're looking at five days later, we see the high priest um, come from Jerusalem. So we know the high priest is... Um, at the time, which is, uh, I believe, if it's the same one, um, and many others, we saw the same sect at the time. You know, many of those were the same people that were um, partly responsible for, you know, Jesus's um, crucifixion at the cross. But here we're seeing here. Um, the high priest comes from Jerusalem with many others. Again, pretty similar, set up these charges against Paul. With them, they, they bring a professional orator, uh, an orator named Tertullius, who, when the trial came, made a speech against Paul before Felix. And at first, he sought to try and flatter the governor and then stated that Paul was a ringleader troublemaker he's saying he was a ringleader of the Nazarenes so uh, we all know what the Nazarenes are you know again it's like coupling them up with Jesus he's a, he's a ringleader of the Nazarenes and they tried to bring the Gentiles into the holy temple and the Jews who were with him agreed because obviously no the jews the sadducees you know, they agreed they agreed that everything that he said about paul was true and in a sense most of it was but he tried to make it look <coughs> particularly as bad as possible so it's like you can imagine the prosecutor um if you've been in a court of law you're hearing the charges written out of you and you're thinking, God, oh, that wasn't what happened. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you're hearing the charge sheet being read out. Do you know what I mean? You've been, have, you, have you ever been in the dock? Who's been in the dock? And they're hearing the charge sheet read out and you're thinking, really? That's what happened? Or that's not what happened? And you're like, what? Really? But you also know that, you know, that some of it was true. Do you know what I mean? But he tried to make it look as bad as possible. And that's what an orator or a prosecutor's job is, to make it look as bad as possible in front of the court of law. And the same thing, what the orator's doing here is what the prosecution was doing. So it's the same thing. Um, and, and, and of course, they wanted to get Paul into trouble with the governor. And it's also possible to say, more or less true, but in such a way to give a wrong impression God desires truth in the inward parts. Let's look at Psalm 51, verse 6. So someone got Psalm 51, verse 6. Psalm 51, verse 6. Psalm 51, verse 6. Psalm 51, verse 6. Anybody there? Behold, thou de desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Amen. That's really powerful. Uh, can you read that again? That's so powerful. I'm reading from the King James, by the way, uh, Ivor. Yeah, behold, behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. This is a really powerful statement. This is a really, really, and, it, and it's and it's one you know, that we need to really understand that God desires truth from the inward. That's where he desires the truth from. It doesn't matter what we, uh, it doesn't matter what we try and dress up on the outside. Yet you, yet you desired faithfulness. Even in, even in the womb, you taught us wisdom in that secret place. 
it's really, really powerful to understand that God desires our truth inwardly. That's what he wants from us. Because he knows we say that the truth will set us free. Is that Maxine Samson, SMA1? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yep. Oh, good evening, Maxine. How are you doing? Oh, good sorry. Hi, good evening, business, everybody. <laughs> yeah, so he desires that truth from the inward. And, and he said, Paul is glad to confess to his faith in the Lord Jesus, even if it means death for him. He's ready. This is what I like about Paul. He ain't playing. It don't matter what situation is. All he wants to do is confess the faith. He don't care. He ain't busy. Him. Of course, he wants to reach his goal, get to Rome. But he, he everywhere he's gone, he's already been covered. As we saw in the last chapter, it was covered when the Holy Spirit spoke to Paul and said, listen, because of what you've done, testifying my faith, I'm going to make sure you go to Rome. Imagine that. Yeah, imagine that the Holy Spirit telling you what you're going to do for the rest of your life because you've been faithful to the Lord. It's like, you know, it's like, it's really powerful stuff. And when the Holy Spirit starts speaking to us in these kind of ways, I'm going to give an example. I'm going to give an example, right? So we're called to preach to all nations and everything else, you know, and I'm getting one or two people, you know, that are, that are traveling, that are traveling, couple in our website and they're asking me to come and preach you know in, in, in different places and of course i'm having to be in, in in discernment with the lord some of these places that these people are asking me to preach i'm like what you know i'm like you, you know i'm having to go to the lord and go really you know you're talking about these places where they're not safe i'm reading they're not safe they're not safe to go or you know, I'm thinking, right, well, is it the enemy trying to get me into some camp? <laughs> you, you, this is what, so, but Paul is not businessing. <coughs> you know, he's not businessing with the truth there. He's ready to die for the faith. And this is what I'm trying to say. You know, right now, you know, we're in a time right now where we have to be asking God for that same desire for the faith of like, you know, what? Mm. you know, this is like, yeah, this is like, these are the times right now. Mm. These are the times. Imagine that, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, um, I've got to have conversations, you know, with family, you know, your children and all these things like, you know, everyone wants to die right now, but imagine that. I believe the Holy Spirit saying to me, listen, you're going to be all right, whatever you do. Mm. But we need to be in conversation with the Lord. We need to be in, in dialogue with the Holy Spirit. We need to be in a place where, you know, we're saying, to, who, me? You know, that little, that little, little Natalie there. Yeah, you, two songs. He's saying more songs are coming. Every time I see you, I'm going to ask you to do a song. Mm. Start learning. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> I'll make sure I learn some now. <laughs> We're ready. We're getting yeah. ready. We're getting ready. We're getting ready. Do you know what I mean? I see Chloe. I see. I see. I see. I see uh, Chloe. Eh? You know. You know. When I when I say Chloe, your turn to pray. She's out. She's out the traps right now. She ain't playing. She's ready. You know. She, listen. God is preparing us here. You know, he's preparing us together, the brothers and sisters, to walk. You know, I was, you know, we was in, we was, we was, we was out in a yesterday in a place yesterday. You know, and you know, there's a lot of demonic energy. Demonic oppression is real. Let's let's have it right. Mm. Let's 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 be let's be um let's be honest. Our world, you know, doesn't see it as that. Do you know what I mean? Even in like some of the churches, they don't even think it's real. No. You've got Christians out there celebrating Halloween right now. You know, yeah. You know, we're, we're, you know, yesterday we were in a place where people are manifesting left, right and centre, you know, because, you know, they think, you know, that, you know, that like, you know, hop in there, hop in there, you know, that ain't going to get rid of your demonic oppression, mate. No man can get rid of your demonic oppression. <coughs> it's only God. It's a cleansing and an outpouring of the Holy Spirit through the sanctification, mm. through the word of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the living God working in you and living in righteousness, through the right standing through him. So what you guys are doing, you know, 
in your relationships, you know, with, with, with your father and, and, and sowing into the, your, your Bible studies with your brothers and sisters and growing in your faith, you know, working in terms of how we're operating in this ministry. You know, what that said to me yesterday, right, was what we're doing on Faithful, we're doing, we're doing the right things. The Holy Spirit, you know, really confirmed and concealed to me yesterday. He said, keep going with what you're doing because you're on the right track. You're on the right track. You're on the right track. And some of these ministries have been established for many, many years. You know, we're, we're in our first year of functioning and we're on the right track here at Faith Walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you know, I'm really, really gracious to our Lord Jesus with what he's doing with us. And I'm really gracious to this group of people that he's commissioned us to go and grow as a group. It's really nice and fellowship yesterday, just meeting up with brothers and sisters and being able to, you know, just connect. And I was even in a place where I thought, oh, my friend lives there. I'm going to go and pop around there. Do you know what I mean? How nice is that? And I could go and knock on her door. <laughs> this is powerful stuff. The body of Christ is powerful. And we need to be operating in the body, in true fellowship with each other. Questions, comments coming in. Um, I was going to say, do you know, it was only this year, like, I'm not really doing anything for Halloween. Like, obviously, I've had the girls in the past, and, like, I've done it because the girls wanted to do it. And, you know, it's, it's you know, the girls, I didn't want the girls missing out. But, like, the girls have still gone trick-or-treating because they're with my mum. I can't, I can't do anything about that. But I've chosen not to. Alfie's not doing anything. You know, I haven't put no decorations up. Kids are not on my door. I've ignored them, which I felt a bit guilty for at first. But I thought, no, actually, what am I feeling guilty for? I don't want to entertain that. So, yeah, I I've, I've, think I've done pretty well this year. I think you've done really, really well. Well done. Well done. You're doing really well in general. You know, I want to encourage you. You know, you've, you're have you one person that said, you know, you know, you want to grow in your faith. You're aware of you know, that you want to grow and you've, you're turning up and you're doing what you need to be doing. There's a, there's a saying in, um, in, um, in, in the fellowship, isn't it? Sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly, but it will always materialise if we work for it. Do you know what I mean? Chloe, you know, raise hands and you're working for it right now. God is blessing you, surrounding you around with good people. You know, uh, you're going to have a lovely time in December. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, Chloe, hey, over to you. <laughs> Um, hello yeah i was um going to set i was going to set at the beginning of the meeting but it's just in line with what you've been talking about either when amy was i mean amy when natalie was singing i had an image of her on stage you're on stage and you were worshiping you were um leading a worship team so that was really um, prophetic and it was really nice to see, you know. So then when Iva said that about, um, you know, stepping out and the Holy Spirit talking to us. Yeah, that's, that's what I got for you, Natalie. I was so excited for what God's going to do in your life. Uh, Amen. And, it's, and it all starts with obedience. It all starts with obedience, even when it's challenging, even when it's uncomfortable, even when... We do not understand it. It all starts with the obedience in in Christ, and He's just so ready to. Uh, he's so ready to give us um, our purpose and our calling and what makes us who we are and what He He created us to do and what job He's given us. And it's just so exciting to be. It's 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 a time. It's a season of. Um, uncertainty but a season of excitement so it's so good amen amen and uh on that note do you know what i mean you know thank you for, for saying that clarity do you know what i mean i was reminded yesterday you know on their worship team there was just one person on there and the one person that i thought of for faithful was natalie cooper i thought there's only one person worshiping there and i thought wow it's very good but he hasn't got a voice like Natalie Cooper. Hallelujah. <laughs> I thought Natalie Cooper with an Ivory Emmanuel encore background. Hallelujah. A two-man team 
with, with, with an organ. So we need to find someone who can play an organ, Natalie. So it might be you. You might be doing some organ lessons to go with that. Hallelujah. Funded by the funded by the ministry. Hallelujah. I can see a vision coming on there right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we just pray that you continue to develop us and equip us in every situation. That every requirement that is required in this ministry, that you will equip us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Holy Spirit, touch us, Lord, to bring forth forth and everything that we need to provide in the mighty name of Jesus so again I'm going to be talking to you about that in a little bit more detail Natalie because we're going to we're going to invest in your talent okay we're going to invest in that, your talent so that's what we're going to do so um you talk oh, to don't me. Ivy you'll make me cry <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I think that's one thing no one's ever I'd have it of doing that but it wasn't for the right reasons <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Transformation. <laughs> what, what? There you go. Oh, no. Yeah, they have actually. Yeah, they have. Yeah, glory to God. So we're going to do that. So that's really powerful. Uh, yeah, I'm really good. Also, can I just say something as well? I'm wearing my Faith Walk t shirt, my Faith Walk jumper today. And my friend, who's not a Christian, I was talking to her on the phone. She goes, oh, what are you wearing? I said, oh, my faith walk jumper. She goes, oh, what, are you letting everyone know now? I was like, yeah. Like, everyone should know anyway. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, she is dead against it. But I'm, I, I, I'm going to get her. And, well, she does go to church, but she just, she's one of those who goes to church, but she doesn't believe. And, but I'm going to work my magic on her. Amen. So um, what, you, what I need you to do, I need you to take a picture of that, actually, by the way, you and your faithful teacher, like just one picture, because you are, you're, 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 you're we're prophetically calling out here, you're going to go on the front of the website, worship team. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so I need you to take a picture of yourself and, uh, you know, with your faithful top on. And you, Malcolm, you also need to do that. Uh, also, don't think you're getting away with it. Hiding behind that cross. Hallelujah. You're, you need a, I need a picture of you with your faithful top on. And I need to get you in the uh, team. And also you, Maxime, as well. I need one of you as well, because you're going to be joining our, our ministry prayer team. Hallelujah. You're not getting away with it either. So. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. So bless you. Bless you all. Right. So let's get back to this. That's all the good news. Let's get back to this. Let's get into this 2429. So we know Tetlas, he was a special orator. He was called to present religious leaders' cases before Roman governors. He made accusations. He was a troublemaker. He stirred up riots among the Jews around the world. He was a ringleader of unrecognized religious cults. It was against Roman law, and he tried to desipate the temple. Wow. So we, we got, imagine that. A right troublemaker was making these charges against Paul. Um, Paul stood up for what he believed. And here we go. The, uh, the journey continues. Um, who wants? Who would like to read from... 10 to 21. All right. All right. Who, who was that? Amy. Amy? Oh, cool, Amy. Amy, Amy you, you read, got your Bible darling. in front of you? Yeah, I have. Who well, are Sister Amy? 10 to 21. Read for us. And then, Maxine, you can finish it off 22 to 27. Then Paul, after the governor had nodded to him to speak, answered, in so much as I know that you have been for many years a judge of this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer my, for myself. Because you may assert certain that it is no more than 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. And, th and they neither found me in the temple disputing with anyone, nor in sight in the crowd, either in the synagogues or in the city nor can they prove the things of which they now accuse me. But this I confess to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, so I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, and there will be a resurrection of the dead both of the just and the unjust. This being so, I myself always strive 
to have a conscience without offense towards God, amen. Now, after many years, I came to bring alms and offerings to my nations in the midst of which some Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with a mob nor with tumult. They ought to have been here before you to object if they had anything against me. Or else let those who are here themselves say if they found any wrongdoing in me while I stood before the council. Amen. Right. So we're looking at this again. So I'm going to invite um, uh, Brother Dick. Where's he gone? What's sticking out for you in that one, Brother Dick? Probably where Paul starts to um, uh, defeat what they're saying, to, to challenge what they're saying that, you know, and, and, I, and I don't know what way he says this, but he says, I confess to you that according to the way which they call a sect, so I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things that are written in the law and the prophets. So he's saying, you know, you can call this a sect if you want to, but what are you? Because <laughs> you believe the same thing as I believe. Yes. And that's what jumps out at me first time. Amen. That's a good one. I like that. Yeah, that's really good because Paul talks with Felix and it becomes so personal that it shows in 2425. So we're in 20, no, that's, that's the next stage. But he, he, he goes into him here, you know, that when he when he when he's talking to him, he's saying to him, you know, that you, you cannot produce these evidence to support these general accusations and for example the jewish jewish leaders accuse paul of starting trouble like you know it's like it's very hypocritical isn't it Do you know what i mean that they you know what they're actually doing and what they're saying just ain't matching up and that reflects with some of the world isn't it do you know what i mean when we look at um what's going on in our world. When the governor had given him the sign to speak, Paul answered in the knowledge that you have many years, you for many years have been a judge of these people. And I confidently offer my defense of my case. And for you to ascend that there is no more than 12 days since I came up to Jerusalem to worship, neither in the temple, neither in the city, nor throughout the city, and you, can, you can't find anyone to demonstrate and find me arguing. You see, when he's looking at beginning at this passage, some of the Jews from Asia um, knew Paul's grammar and they went wrong. And he began to say one thing that over to another so that the sentence became quite disconnected. But we see it being, being very disconnection, you know, showing that Paul's defence is that of a man whose conscience is clear, you know, and that's, and that's a really beautiful thing, you, you know, that you're, you're in a court, you're defending yourself, but you're also defending yourself with your conscience being clear. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I, I don't know many times when I've been defending myself, particularly in a, in a court of law, and my conscience has been never been clear, you know, because nine times out of 10, I've been lying out of my teeth you know just to get off or even if I was I wasn't you know how it was ingrained in me was don't tell them nothing so I never never had any clear conscience going on because I was too frightened of what was going on with the opposition number one and too frightened to say anything that would probably incriminate me so nine times out of ten I just stayed silent with no clear conscience thinking like what's gonna happen you know waiting for my fate you know and, and it says the tragedy was that when he was bringing the contribution from his churches for the poor of Jerusalem was when he was metacularly observing the Jewish law, the same thing that they came to arrest him for. And he says, one of the greatest things about Paul is that he speaks in his own defense with force and sometimes with a flash of indignation, but never with self-pity or bitterness that would have been so natural in a man whose finest actions had been so cruelly and deliberately misinterpreted. I love that. 
I pretty, I pretty much love the fact that, you know, he's in a place where he is, he's actually, he's in a place where he's standing strong. He's standing tall in what he believes in with a place of dignity, not self-pity, not feeling sorry for himself. He has a confidence that he knows, you know, exactly what, what he's doing and where he's going. And, and I believe that that's, that's something that we need to hold on to. Even when we're persecuted, even when people are speaking against us, even when they get the story wrong, even when they're saying things about you that are not quite true, you know, it doesn't have to be in a court of law. Let's let's position these circumstances to, you know, maybe somebody who's gossiping about you, maybe something who said something that's incorrect about you, or maybe this misgrewed their words or hasn't said it in the correct way of how the situation happened. He's coming back with a sense of self-dignity and also in the place of not bitterness for the people that are persecuting him. That is love. You know, I just love that. You know what I mean? It's so powerful. You know, that Paul's in a position, he's showing us how to love in dire circumstances. And we need to really learn from this because it's all about love. And here it is. It's been demonstrated right here, right here. You know, you know, I know for me, you know, going through, you know, this, this process of sanctification and going through, you know, the amount of times that people have hurt me, the amount of times that I've been wounded, the amount of times people have just said things about me, you know, it's like my natural reaction is to, you know, go against them, you know, but now I cannot do that. I can't do that anymore. You know, there's behaviours that were just natural to me that I have had to change, you know, because the Bible, the, you, you, everything's in that Lord's Prayer. Forgive them. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Samson's SMA1, which is Maxine. So used to Galaxy. I have to think about Sorry, it. Pastor. Sorry, <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, what you're saying is so true. But if you don't have love, then you cannot do it. And that's how I feel at the moment. I have no love because I'm struggling a lot. <laughs> I am struggling. Bless you. Bless you. Feelings are not facts. That's what I'm going to say to you. You've done a lot of loving acts <coughs> yesterday. Right? But, mm. I'm going to tell you that you have got love. I'm going to tell you that right now. So don't let the enemy put you in that trap by telling you something different and then you feeding yourself there's a lot of love in your heart there's a yeah. lot of, there's a lot of things that you do that's so kind and loving you know you're loving towards that son of yours you're loving in this ministry well we listen none of us are perfect but i'm not going to be here listening to you tell yourself condemn yourself when I know it's not true. I don't think that though. <laughs> you don't think that you don't think difficult. you love it. No, it's very difficult. You don't uh, think you, well, we need to pray for you. Uh, we need to pray for you. And like you know, not you know, if so how long have you been feeling like that? Um since 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 I got up, I started worrying about things. This morning. And I was just, yeah. So what was you feeling like yesterday? Just out of interest. Well, yesterday was it was it was okay, but um I realized stuff, people were it wasn't it wasn't um as spiritual I thought it was gonna be. Maybe that was because I was in the wrong mindset anyway. Maybe that was it, maybe. So you I'm um, sorry, did you my, um, you got baptised when uh, the other day, didn't you? My sister? Did you get baptised last week? No. No, I was baptised oh. before. I baptised. I, at I the last retreat? Think... With you? Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, I was yeah. reaffirmed. <laughs> and I was reaffirmed. Rededicated, but... rededicated. Yeah, rededicated, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, 
we have these and on them times, yeah. When I'm going to come to you, um, Dick, just two seconds. When you're feeling like that, that's when you need to go into words, because yeah, that's when you need that. to look at what the scripture says. Above all, keep loving one mm. another. Doesn't matter because love covers a multitude of sins. We have to go to the word of God because you're okay. leaning on your own understanding. That's what we need to be in the word. Let us love one another for love is from God. So we have come to know and believe that love from God, that God has a love for us. So Amen. don't let the enemy take that away from you. No, thank you. Yeah. And you've got to understand that, you know, there are a lot of dark forces around at the moment. So we could buy into anything, but I want to tell you today, it's not true. Thank you. Amen. I rebuke that right awesome. now in the name of Jesus. Dick, over to you. Yeah, uh, just on that, I just want to say that as well, Even There's no condemnation for those that are in Jesus Christ. Amen. And, 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 and in the Bible, I only learned this the other day, and I'm sharing this because I like to share what I hear. You know, in the Bible, it says, you were saying there, um, Natalie, about being afraid this morning or fearful. Apparently in the Bible, there's 365 verses that said, do not be afraid. So going back to what Aver says, if you're in the word, You'll read these things, you know what I mean? And that fear will not be the issue that it sometimes becomes for all of us, for all of us, mm. you know? So uh, just just on that basis, one one verse for every day of the year. Hey, Amen. I have a, Amen. I have a, I, sorry, sorry, Natalie. Sorry. Amen. Amen. Yeah, hey, I have a question. Um, yeah. Verse 12. Um, verse 12. Am I going backwards? No, no, verse 12, where he says, And they neither find me in the temple disputing with anyone nor inciting the crowd, either in the synagogues or in the city. Now, I'm assuming reading that, that that's where he was, was in the temple and in the synagogue. So basically he's referring back to what, to basically they're bringing the charge against him. Mm -hmm. So the orator is saying um, that, you, you, you know, no, he, he's actually Paul is defending himself, saying, "Yeah, yeah. Um, nobody in the temple found me arguing with anyone." So, where has this come from? In so many words, yeah. But my, my, my question, I'm, I'm, I'm just wanting to make sure I'm right in what I'm reading. There is okay. that he was in, he was in the temple and the synagogue at this stage. Whenever they accused him, Correct. or uh, if that's the case, a lot of people turn around, and I, I would like to know this myself, and I'm going to investigate it. You no, know, he says, and they neither find me in the temple disputing with anyone nor in Satan the crowd, either in the synagogues or in the city. People say, you know, there's no need for the church or the temple. When when was that done away with? When was the temple done away with, given the fact that Jesus has died? Amen. You know, and the temple is still there. So, so is it because they didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah? You know, but he clearly goes to the temple, even though Jesus has died. Paul goes to the temple. Amen. The building. The building. Yeah. The, the building. And, 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 yeah, that's what. That's what I'm. The building. Know, I, I, I get. I get. We are the church. I get that a hundred percent. We have to, but we have to go to the building to the assembling of the saints. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. And it's important. It's a very good point. You, you know. It's a really good point you've raised there, Dick. You know what I mean? It's like, it, 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 I think, you know, one of the reasons why the church is losing its power, losing its grip, is because we've got a lot of people saying that we don't need to go to the building anymore, which is nonsense. The power, when we get together in the building, is powerful. And I and, and I, I believe it's of huge importance. You know, I I believe you know the gathering in the building has power. Amen, amen. And it's and it's important that we don't forget that as Christians and believers. You know, as much as we might not like the church, as much as we sometimes don't, you know maybe get on or you know what I mean or you, you know it might be hard work even for us guy I'll tell you it's hard work for me going to church with three kids Man, it's challenging you know <laughs> but you know what the gathering is important the assembling of the saints is important in particular you know um 
I like to get enmeshed in what the church has to offer. Um, Maxine, you're back. Yeah, sorry. I, I just wanted to say that your church is a very spiritual church. Amen. And when we went there, you know, you could see it was a really nice, good congregation and the Holy Spirit was there. It was just amazing. So, yeah. So we, we, we said, get back to that. So in, in um, that point that the Jewish leaders accused Paul of starting trouble. They basically, they were, they, were, they were accusing him of starting trouble among the Jews in the province of Asia and Western Turkey. But those Jews were not present to confirm those accusations. But meanwhile, Paul was able to present the gospel message through his defence, using every opportunity to witness in, in, in that phase there. And it's really important. It's right. Yeah, he said, like <coughs> my brother says, he says, he said, I went up to Jerusalem to worship. He's telling them exactly why he went. He said, you can easily verify no more than 12 days ago, I went up to Jerusalem to worship. My accusers did not find me arguing with anyone in the temple, in the building, or sitting up or stirring up anyone in the crowd, in the synagogue, or anywhere else in the city. So Paul, we know, was a regular visitor to every town. As we've gone through Acts, one of the first places he always went was a synagogue. And he preached that all the way too. So it's kind of like pretty much for us. It's like, if I'm going to see Dick, or if I'm going to see Natalie Cooper, if I'm going to see Amy, if I'm going to see Chloe, if I'm going to see Malcolm, amen. And it comes on a, a Sunday or there's a service going, as a believer, I should want to attend the building to connect. You know, I've had a lovely time with Chloe's church. You know, um, really, really lovely time. Love going in there. One of the things that we look forward to when we go down there, going in different churches, it's really important that we connect in with fellowship with each other, you know. And it and for me, I, I, I'm 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 at the point right now. I ain't interested in your doctrine, or your. I'm going in any building, you know. I know who I am what I stand for. I'm a Bible-based spiritual Christian, but I will not resist myself going in any church because i know that god might be presenting me an opportunity no matter where i go natalie over to you yeah i was just gonna say do you know when you when they were reading it the first time i thought like they were gonna say you know when jesus says he without he without sin cast the first stone <laughs> I, I thought he was gonna say something like that because where, where does he say it like um they said it on one of the things and it sounded like he was gonna say you know Basically, that's what he's like saying. Really, like you can't prove that I, I, I did this. So, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that, but it did sound to me like that's what it was going to say. So let's look at let's look at what he did admit. You know, because we we focused on what he didn't say or where he went, but let's look at what he admitted. He admitted that he was a a heretic, according to the way of thinking, in that he was a follower of Jesus. He believed in the Old Testament, the resurrection, and worshipped the God of their fathers. And here we see he's ready to admit any possible wrong which he had done, but will not falsely confess to any crime. He also, as ever, is glad to confess to his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, even if that means death for him. He's ready. That's really, really powerful. Paul is not playing. Paul is not playing. So let's look at the last verse. Last verse is 22. Nice short chapter tonight. 22 to 27. And I believe, Nat, um, Maxine, are you going to read that for us? Yeah, i read that. I think it was 21. Did, um, 20, 21 to 27? Yeah, far away. Yeah, okay. Unless, um, unless it is for this one statement, which I cried out, standing among them concerning the resurrection of the dead i am being judged by you this day felix procrastinates but when felix heard these things having more accurate knowledge of the way 
he adjourned the proceedings and said, when, Lysir, when, when Lysias, the commander, comes down, I will make a decision on your case. So he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and told him not to, for, not to forbid any of his friends to provide for him or visit him. And after some days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now, as he reasoned with reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now, for when I have when I have a convenient time, I will call for you. Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given him by Paul, that he might release him. Therefore, he sent him more he sent for him more often and conversed with him. But after two years, Portius uh, Fetius succeeded Felix, and Felix wanted to do the Jews a favor, left Paul bound. Amen. Wow. Amen. 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 I mean, Felix is afraid. He's afraid now, Felix. <laughs> and Felix must be knowing. Do you know what I mean? You imagine it. Do you know what I mean? The tables are turned in a courtroom or wherever. wherever yeah, the tables are turning because we can see Felix, who had a very good knowledge of facts about the way things happen, put them off saying, when Lysias, the commander, comes down, I will go into your case. He instructed the centurion that Paul was to be held under guard and that he was, a, was to be allowed some freedom and he instructed him not to hinder any of his friends from rendering from service. So you can see that um, Felix was not unkind to Paul, but we can also see that some of Paul's admissions struck terror in the heart of Felix. Even to the point that his wife, Drusilla, who was the daughter of Herod Agrippa, she had been married to Azizus, king of Emesa, but Felix, with the help of a magician called Atmos, had seduced her from this Atticus and persuaded her to marry him. So it's a little wonder that when Paul presented himself with the high moral demands of God, he was afraid because he's into that magic. He's into that gear. It's, it's the realms of the spirit have shifted right now because you're into the upper realm. So you can imagine right now that he's, he's seeing the fear of God in Paul. He's seeing the power coming out of him and he's thinking, oh, this man's a bit powerful. He's feeling a bit rigid. You know, and um, so for two years, Paul was in prison. And then Felix went too far once too often and it was recalled. He said there was a long standing argument as to whether Caesarea was a Jewish or Greek city and the Jews and the Greeks were at daggers at dawn. And this was an outbreak of the mob violence in which the Jews came off best. So Felix dispatched his troops to aid the Gentiles and thousands of Jews were killed and the troops with Felix's consent and encouragement sacked and looted the houses of the wealthiest Jews in the city. So there's a result, a revolt going on in the city that the Jews did what all Roman provincials had a right to do. They reported their governor to the Rome and that's why Felix left Paul in prison. Even though he was well aware that he should be liberated, he was trying to to curry favour with the Jews, and it was all to no purpose that he was dismissed from his governorship and the influence of his brother saved him from execution, a man named Pallas. Um, Maxine, over to you. Okay. Anybody else want to come in? Oh, oh, did you hear me? Sorry, I wondered if Felix was um, Roman or Jewish. It says Felix was a Jew. 
Oh, thank you. Bless you. We lost Chloe. Yeah, Felix was a Jew. And it says, so Felix decided they would wait until the chief captain came down from Jerusalem. He gave Paul a good deal of liberty. So he thought, let's just carry on, leave him in jail. And we know that Luke was with him. Philip lived in Caesarea, but when Felix and his wife came, Paul had an opportunity to give them both the gospel. So again, he's still, he's still at it, any he, Paul? So Felix, as, as he listened, was really impressed. But instead of accepting the Lord, there and then, he put it off until another day. And then there were millions lost forever because they put off God's offer of salvation. Felix was more interested in money and hoped that Paul would be able to bribe him to get him out of prison, but he also wanted to please the Jews, so he left Paul in prison. See, money, root of all evil. Over to you, um, Dick. I think it was Natalie Forster, Aver. Oh, Natalie, sorry, Natalie, you're right. No. Go, yeah, I've not put the hands down. <laughs> No, no, I will say though, I've got a go over. He's not, he's not very well and he's just woken up. So, um... bless you, bless you, bless you. Take him down. Thank you. God bless you. Bless you. Hello, Alfie. Oh, bless Alfie. <laughs> We're finishing up now. Go on, go on, um, Dick, over to you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, just, just on, on that part um, about being afraid. At the start of the, when Tertullus starts to, Tertullus starts to accuse Paul, he puffs up, um, Felix, saying that through you we enjoy great peace and prosperity uh, is being brought to this nation by your foresight. We accept it always and in all places most noble. Apparently, Felix massacred thousands of Jews, right? So here's a man who massacred thousands of Jews. He's held in fear. <laughs> Paul starts talking about Jesus. And as you say, the tables are reversed. He's now in fear. Paul's walking in the Lord. Here's a guy that's up on an accusation and, 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 and could be killed. And yet, no, the, the fear. And that goes back to what we were saying just previously. Fear is not of the Lord. Amen. Because Paul didn't have the fear. He Amen. had the power. He had the power. Jesus Christ. Amen. And if, and, and, but look at the, the thing of thing. And what I like about that passage, and I think we all have to look at this, things could have been a lot different for Felix if he'd accepted the gospel. But he chose not to. And look what happened. Many people perish. Unbelievable. Father God, we thank you for this Bible study tonight. We thank you. We pray for Alfred. We pray for everyone. We thank you for Dick. Love seeing Dick. It's always great. Pray for Sister Maxine, Amy, Malcolm, Chloe, Gemma. Lift up um, Natalie. We thank you for this time together. We look forward to coming together again on Wednesday. And we just pray that you continue to equip us and that none of us have any, have any sleepless nights. And we don't give any enemy any power over us tonight. And we just banish and rebuke anything that's of him in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you all and keep you. May God shine his face upon you. May God give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Bless him. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. I have a poorly baby. I'm probably going to have a sleepless night. <laughs> oh, bless you. Well, if you need more prayer, give us a ring. I'll be up till 12. I'm praying against them. <laughs> Good to see you, Malcolm. Hey, God, bless you know that, God bless everyone. God bless everyone. God bless you in the name of Jesus. I'm up all night, man. Do you know, if you need some more prayer, man. God bless you. Take God care. Bless. Take care. God, God bless, bless you, everyone. Bye. Take care. God bless. God bless. Bye. 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 Bye.